Hello, guys and gals, me, Mudahar, and welcome to another episode of Dank Web Browsing, Deep Web Browsing, whatever you want to call the series. Ladies and gentlemen, we are up to episode number 114. As always, the theme for today's episode is as random as always, came home from work, decided what a good time to actually record some Dank Web, need some time off, and wanted to really chill. So for you all, it might be Sunday. For me, it's a couple days beforehand. Ladies and gentlemen, hope you relax, enjoy yourself, and let's see what we find on this episode of Dank Web Browsing. All right, so here's a uh, file. I know we come across these every uh, few, uh, every, every once in a while. So this is one all about getting fucked up on things laying around your house. Now, I do not promote the idea of drug use. I don't, I do, don't, don't do drugs, all right? I don't think I have to be the fucking one saying that shit. Don't be the one... Don't, don't be doing drugs, okay? Don't be following this guy to a T. Let's just read it just, just to read it. So here's one about getting fucked up around anything on the house, all right? So, yes, I'm afraid it's true. Sometimes there is no easy or good way to alter your brain waves and enhance your thinking. In other words, sometimes you can't afford beers or any other drug, weed, LSD, coke, etc., Hey, maybe you're just a thrifty guy that gets high. I don't know. Maybe you can't get out to the beer store. Maybe you're too young to buy, and the person who usually buys for you has recently died. Oh, shit. Maybe your local drug dealer has been arrested. You know, the whole thing about <laughs> you can't get out to the beer store? It's kind of true in Canada, to be honest. You can only buy from, like, two locations over here. Well, you can buy from, like, shops now, I think. But, like, we have some fucking fucked up beer laws around here, dude. Like, shit just... Like, it's like lockdown, it's like prohibition level beer laws in Canada, let me tell you. I have found myself in this terrible scenario many a time and have developed some useful techniques to getting fucked up with some everyday things just laying around the house. Okay, so this is like the cheap way of getting fucked up, all right? <laughs> Shit. So, special note on sleep deprivation. There's really one secret to all these home recipes. The buzz is intensified if you've been up without sleep for a long time. In fact, if you don't sleep for a long, long time, you'll start to hallucinate. It's true, I know, because I do it all the time. If you go many hours without sleep and try some of these methods, the lack of sleep will intensify your buzz. Don't do that. That's actually true, though. Like, if you guys think that I have raccoon eyes now, I used to be fucking awake for days when I used to work, like, my old gig, because, like, when, when you were, like, you know, there's times when you get into jobs where, like, you're on the clock 24 fucking 7. Not 24 7, but you're up, like, you're working, like, how some people say, I'm working a 48-hour day. Like, you're just fucking working overtime out of 24 7. But, yeah, that shit will happen. That shit happens fast, dude. Nitrous oxide and whip it world. Okay, I don't have fucking nitrous oxide in my house, but let's do this. The one common thing in many refrigerators is whipped cream. Yeah, it tastes good, but what's interesting about it is that the kind in, uh, is the kind in pressurized containers. Oh, it's like the, like the spray on shit. Okay, yeah. You can buy it in a grocery store. Contains a good hit or two of nitrous oxide. You probably know what this is. But just in case you don't, I'll tell you. It's a gas that'll give you a nice buzz. Sometimes it's called laughing gas. It's one of the gases that dentists use when they do really painful dental work. When I got my wisdom teeth pulled out, they just like straight up like put anesthesia into me. It was fucking weird because the guy gave me general anesthesia and like I was supposed to go out like a couple seconds before, but I was just talking over my ass. But yeah, I never had the laughing gas thing at any dentist office. I've never had that shit kick up to me. I've just had like general like intravenous shit going on. Interesting stuff. In a fresh can, there are, depending on the size of your lungs, one to three good hits of nitrous oxide. Okay. <laughs> All right, dude. The best way to do this is to try to hyperventilate a little first by inhaling and exhaling real fast before you suck the gas up. Don't shake the can up because that will make the cream absorb some of the gas. Just hold the can upright, exhale fully, and then put the nozzle in your mouth. Release the gas and inhale deeply. Hold it in as long as you can. If you do this right with four or five, four or five cans? What the fuck? That's a lot of whipped cream, dude. You might go to Whip It World, where everything is red and black and you're in slow motion with the bells of the gods echoing in your ear. You might want to plan ahead. If you live with your parents, invent some reason you need a lot of whipped cream. Maybe make sure that the fridge is stocked with four or five cans at all times. <laughs> That's pretty fucked up, dude. But the way he's describing the high, I don't want that. That sounds bad. Pills. There are probably lots of drugs to get you fucked up on in the medicine cabinet. Decongestion and antihistamines taken in the right combination and in the right amount will fuck you up good. But you have to experiment <coughs> Excuse me, with the proper dosages for your body. If you live at home with your parents, look for any prescription narcotics. These are the choice home drugs, and depending on how bad a kid you are, your parents might have a good supply of Valium. Valium mixed with one of those alcohols listed above will get you nicely buzzed. Oh shit, that is fucking true. If you do live with parents, by the time you get like... 
Like, by the time you get, like, high school age, your parents are going to start needing, like, medications in some ways. Sometimes they get some fucked up shit. That's, this is bad, man. This is, like, actually, like, legit. Whiteout and model airplane. Okay, I've heard of that in high school. Here's a longer buzz. Maybe some of you tried this, but it'll work heavy. The idea is sniffing glue. Well, the way this works is with a lot of chemical type things you'll find around the house. The best way to find out what works best is try everything out. What works really well for me is whiteout. The best technique I've found is to either take a large plastic baggie or a small paper bag, put a generous helping of the home intoxication agent at the bottom of it, and putting the open... Uh, okay. Yeah, all right, there you go. So it's like fucking people who put, like, paint thinner. Because some people get high off paint thinner and shit like that, and they'll just, like, put it into the... Yeah, I get that. Things to smoke. You know about clove cigarettes. Well, cloves actually have slight hallucinogen. I don't know anything about clove cigarettes. I know clothes. I know cigarettes. Okay. You probably have some clothes in your kitchen cabinet. I do. It's easy if they're already ground up, but if they aren't, that's cool too, because unground ones are fresher. You can smash them with a hammer and smoke them up in a pipe. If you don't have a pipe, use a Coke can by putting a dent in the top and poking a hole in the center of the dent and breathing in the smoke through the opening on the top. You can use a dent as a bowl for the clothes. Nutmeg is also supposed to have some. Oh yeah, I know about nutmeg. I'm gonna smoke some tonight. <laughs> don't do that. Alcohol. You know, just because you don't have any beers or hard alcohol doesn't mean you can't get drunk. There are probably things all over your house that have drinkable alcohol in them. For example, mouthwash is 25 to 30 percent alcohol. That is true. Nyquil is 25 percent, and major other body chemistry altering drugs. All right. So what this guy's giving you is a way for you to get fucking wasted around your house off of like everyday things. Now. I have clothes in my house. I could probably get cigarettes, but I'm not going to do it, okay? Because what the fuck, man? I'm not going to get high off clothes, man. That's that's not me. But fucking the idea of like whiteout and shit like that, pills, these are pretty, pretty standard ideas. Do I promote anybody to be taking these kind of drugs? No. All right, don't be doing drugs. In fact, you know, let's stop looking at drugs. Let's go, let's go look at something hopefully a little more family friendly, YouTube allowed. Right, because we all know YouTube is for fucking four-year-olds now, okay? I can't be telling a four-year-old to get high off of pills. It's not happening. Gates to the underworld, a place of information. Oh, boy, you know, I always like, I love fucking forum sites, dude. You know, forum sites are always really great, especially when one of the fucking forum posts is hentai furry and guru. First of all, what the fuck is guru, actually? I don't even know. Wait, is guru that anime violent shit? What the fuck is that? I swear, there's like so many different fucking kinds of it. It's like yaoi, guru, all that shit. I don't know anything about that. But, I mean, I know what hentai is. I think I think anybody with a brain cell fucking has known what hentai is. But I, now I'm stuck. Anyways, all right, what the fuck? Okay, I'm not thinking about that shit right now. Gates to the underworld, a place for information. And I love forums on the internet, okay? Ever since I read, ever since I think I read, like, Sibolichin, it was on the deep web, or what the fuck was it? It was, like, one of the chan sites. I've ever, I've been, like, addicted to this kind of shit. If you ever want, like, real information, you go, like, a heavy chan site and just dig around it for a while, and boom, you'll be set. You don't need anybody's help. You're good on your own. But here we got random, which has 10 topics, so we're going to go open up random. You got programming, which is fucking dead. Hacking exists, and it's like the second... No, it's... No, deep web links is the second big one. We'll check that out. Hacking, uh, political debate, which one of them is 9-11 and an inside job. I want to check that out. The other one is top secret. And here's the thing, conspiracy corner, where it says scary videos and others. And then I, I guess we'll open the hentai furry shit, you know, why the fuck not? But let's go over here and see just what random is. So, how bad is porno for the mind? All right, let's, let's, uh, apparently, apparently nobody fucking cares. Is one of the topics I wish to research at university, how dangerous is neutral porno to the human mind? Uh, I'm pretty sure porn is fucked up in the sense that it gives a lot of people, like, fake ass fucking, like, some people think that what happens in porn happens in real life, and that's the furthest thing from the truth. Nobody has, like, 45-inch dicks, dude. Anyways, your thoughts on pedophiles... That only has, like, one reply. Let me see what that is, though. Good topping. I wonder how pedophiles think sometimes. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it's like a, it's like an actual discussion going on. It's not just, like, fucking crucifying the dude who asked. Is the God... Is God real for you? Is the God real for you? Nobody, nobody's discussed that. Uh, is love real? Oh, that has, like, the most responses. Uh, what exactly is romantic love? I know that parental and familial love is real, but what about the love for a girlfriend or a wife? At what point does that surface attraction for a woman's breasts, man's penis go past that to reach their hearts? Should we all try to pursue such relationships? You know, you know, man, I love it when I go to a forum on the deep web and I'm just like, it's past work and I'm getting into a deep discussion. Somebody's like, I don't know. This is like Nintendo talking, okay? 
Uh, Nintendo re released some SNES classics for all of us, but anyways, I don't know, I always feel lonely every day, because <laughs> you're getting scalped all the time. That is sad to hear, man, that is sad to hear, man, woman, well, at least you have us. Oh, that's so cute, they're like a little loving community, I love it, dude. It's so great when, like, it's not just, like, fuck that shit. They're all, like, together. It's amazing. Now, of course, I don't get a lot of replies. But, as you can see, they're a pretty active forum. Like, all these ones were posted on, like, August 31st and shit. And they, they've been getting, like, even though they haven't been getting replies, they've been getting some fair amount of views, to be honest. It's one thing that I can't really tell here. Yeah, total members are 36. Newest member is Fat Hacker. Uh, most users ever online was August... 28. Okay, that makes me feel like this page is really, really brand new. So we might have found a fresh, hot, spicy forum that we can definitely look into. If you go to the Deep Web site, you can find that they have some Deep Web mention, like Grandma's Garden. Uh, I guess we'll look at that. I, I think that's a fucking name I can remember. One of them is a question. Uh, where did the cute girls forum went to? Would you create it again with the... Okay, that either makes it look like something like Pink Meth, where it's like nude leaks, which is also fucked up, but the name over there is like, are you looking at a pedophile forum? Like, I don't know if the site allows pedophilia on its site. I don't think it does. It doesn't seem like it has any of that, or maybe it could, but one of their porn forums isn't even about that. Usually, that would be like a fucking fat giveaway to that kind of shit. Here, they've got something about hacking, so SQL injections, uh, tests, Amazon carding made easy. Always read shit about Amazon carding. I highly doubt it's fucking real. Um, here is politically incorrect. So 9-11 was an inside job. Now, none of you have any replies to it. I think 9-11 would have... Oh, there's a stereotypical fucking... Uh, what is that? The, the Jews did 9-11 thing, which... Holy shit. Now, there's a bunch of conspiracy theories you can go about. All the conspiracy theories about 9-11 being an inside job are absolute nonsense. I think they're acting them up. Even the mention of the truthism argument effectively invalidates any argument, just with guilt by association. I believe there was a secret effort by the U.S. government to spect effectively spam the internet with stupid conspiracy theories so any real evidence would be instinctively grouped with the nutters. Okay, you know, that's actually not a fucking bad conspiracy. Like, if I if I was running it, I'd spam the internet with so much stupid lit uh, shit like squirrels buttfuck the Twin Towers or something to the point that everyone opposing it would have looked like a nut job. But the thing about 9-11 is I'm not going to get all preachy about it. It's like, it's one of those things that like, there's so much you would, there's so much you don't know, right? Like there's so much of stuff that's hidden behind the, 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 the one way mirror that honestly you could sit around and talk for it for hours and it'd make a great discussion conversation, but you're not going to get anywhere. So, I mean, really just fuck it, but let's go to the top secret. Okay. This is top secret by Nintendo. Uh, warning, can't take the heat. Fuck off. I have some talk, man. Fuck that shit, Nintendo. Really? That's what you're gonna tell me? Inside a mystery block? <laughs> what the fuck? You even have a contact page for Nintendo as well, off in Deep Web. That's actually nice. Uh, again, conspiracies. They've got scary videos and others. Post what you got. Nobody's posted scary videos. Now, here we got the hint. Okay, it seems like Nintendo's rolling in dough with all this shit. So they got my sex roleplay experience. Oh. Oh, motherfucker. All right, and we're going to just read like five seconds of this and fuck right off. So what's with the time codes? Yes, yes, me takes off shirt unzips. Okay, so let's go, boy. Show me your dick. I put my hands on your crotch meow. Oh, my gosh, is a beautiful dick. Me suck my dick. What you want, daddy? A hand chop, a foot chop, or you want me to give you a head? Oh, this is me, head. Okay, if you don't mind having them, um, uh, me, my black lipstick smother. What the fuck is this, Anobi? What the hell? Cause I'm an emo bitch? What the fuck? Dude! Dude, it's my immortal too! It's a fucking furry sex- No, it's a sex roleplay experience, dude. But it's in the furry category, what the fuck? Wait, what's a cute furry thread? Oh. Oh god. There's chocolate dripping into that girl's asshole. I just want to fucking kill myself. Let's go to the next. <laughs> Eternity. Uh, who wants to live forever? First of all, motherfucker, I I I don't think I enjoy li living forever, dude. At some point, humanity. At some point, it's better to go out instead of living forever because 
Who the fuck wants? Come on now. Eternity preserves your most important thoughts, stories, and memories for eternity. Okay, so it's not like we're going to freeze you and wake you up one day. All right, fair enough. They got this cute little website over here. It's so it's so heartwarmingly amazing. People are just laughing around. We all pass away sooner or later. We may only leave behind a few photos, maybe some home videos, or in rare situations, a diary or autobiography. But eventually, we are all forgotten. You know, not, not if you've done good things in your life. I don't think everyone just fucking forgets you, man, like shit. You know, may, may, maybe if you had nothing left behind, but what if you could preserve your parents' memories forever? And you could keep their stories alive for your children, grandchildren, and for many generations to come. You know, you, 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 you could still do that shit. You, you could preserve your legacy for the future, and in this way your children, friends, or even total strangers from a distant future will remember you in a hundred years. That's really interesting. Like, you kind of, now that they mention it, like, you could sit there and, like, in the 2300, somebody could look you up and, like, wait, what is this? You could live on forever as a digital avatar and people in the future could actually interact with your memories, stories, and ideas almost as if they were talking to you. That's fucking weird. Holy shit. So, wait, I could be, like, Siri on my phone and you could talk to me in, like, 2300 and, like, based off of all my input, it would respond like I would? That's fucking weird. Become virtually immortal. Eternity collects your thoughts, stories, and memories and curates them into an intelligent avatar that looks like you. The avatar will live forever and allow other people in the future to access your memory. Okay, but what if your servers, like, go out? What if you have, like, no backups? You know, think about that shit. Our big, hairy, audacious goals. We want to preserve for eternity the memories, ideas, creations, and stories of billions of people. Think of it like a library that has people instead of books, or an interactive history for the current and future generations. An invaluable treasure for humanity. 37,526 people have already signed up. Dude, is this a joke? This has to be a joke. They literally, they are literally making an app to turn all of you guys into AIs. Holy shit. They have to be joking. There's no way. Okay, so their site doesn't really extend beyond that, but you can like sign in with fa Okay, so they're, they're in like private beta, it seems what they are. Okay, so like, wait, what is this? Uh, we are trying to offer you access so we can scale our infrastructure. Yeah, of course, the effort to house all this shit is going to be massive, but that's fucking wild. If you think about it, these people are out there to map us so like basically the logic is is they're going to make an app where they're going to in, they're going to ask you to ingest your thoughts stories history photos everything so every private detail about you goes into this or i guess as much as you want and with that they're going to have an algorithm which like reads all of it and properly creates an ai for you because there's no way like if thirty-seven thousand people have signed on there's no way they're gonna have the manpower to like manually make this ai for everyone so it's going to be like a fucking advanced Siri Google search of your shit. And it's weird because, like, I think to an extent Apple does the same thing and Google does the same thing because if you know that they have Siri, they have Google Voice for Android, and they have, uh, what is it for Microsoft? Yeah, Cortana. And, like, over time that AI, like, learns from you on your phone and then it sends the data back anonymously to the home server of whatever, like, service that it's you or you're on. And, like, it creates this large emerging AI and it gets, like, more human, or, like, it appears to be more human as time goes on. It's not, like, sentient, but it just appears more and more human because it has so much more information to deal with. Over here, it's, like, they're developing a system where it's going to keep you alive. Now, if you've been following immortality, like, I don't, I, I follow it a lot. Like, I look at a lot of immortality shit. There's, like, one thing that's close to this. It's called, I think, the Avatar Project, and it's in the Russian Federation, where by 2050, they're planning to have, like, human minds imported into robots. So, like... You still die, right? Like, you're, you're like, we'll still die, but that robot will be, like, a one-to-one -one representation of how we think. And that's almost what this is to a smaller extent. It's fucking weird, dude. We went from, we went from 9-11 being inside jobs to turning ourselves virtually immortal. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Keep things... Today's been a weird episode, let me tell you that, motherfuckers, but we're gonna back out and... <laughs> Hopefully come across some normal shit, dude. Shit. All right, so today's video, you're not getting a picture in picture or something like that. Yes, in fact, it seems that I found a three minute, almost four minute rip on a video that I made a long time ago. Now, it's actually an entire like snippet, not entire snippet. It's actually a snippet of Mankind Divided, which if we actually watch through, if you guys can, here, let me shut up for a second. 
that video is heavily censored. That's and the censorship kills. Well, Ladies and gentlemen, that's like, fucking me. Don't like the <laughs> okay, that is fucking me in today's day and age. That is, that is my fucking video, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if it's one thing that it's freaky, I don't think today's deep web video is something that you really need to watch. I believe that most people who've been watching this series a long time probably know about this. But here it is. Uh, I'm just looking through a site called Mankind's Habit. Uh, if I can, I, did I play the video over here? No, I didn't. So basically. For those of you, by the way, this is a very low resolution rip of it, but what did I expect? It's like 360 fucking P, if I can. Actually, that's what it is, 360 P. I looked at the analytics for it. But ladies and gentlemen, today's video is kind of fucking weird, all right? So I have always kept quiet about this, but let me tell you a little fucking tale of what happened with the deep web, the weirdest thing about it. So the site that I'm looking over here is Mankind Habit, which I believe is from like the episode 30-ish to 40-ish range of deep web browsing. This website, this, this whole thing blew up. I believe this video itself is around a whole million views at this point. So this is a pretty successful episode of deep web browsing. But the reality of it is, is that when I made this episode, about three or four days after making the episode, I had initially seen that they had posted what was a uh, doxing of me. And because of that, I ended up getting a lot of messages on my phone. So, for example, around the time this episode came out, so many people messaged me and called me and said that, Muda, uh, you have your information leaked out on the internet. Now, I wasn't taking... And it wasn't really a leaking of my information. It was like really, really old passwords, uh, some old emails that I didn't really use. And it actually had a city that I used to live in, believe it or not. And I think they all got that information out of an IP uh, lookup or something like that. They pulled out my name or not my name, my phone number from a uh, LinkedIn rip or Facebook. No, like Facebook and LinkedIn. They just looked at the information that was on there. But around the time, this information had a whole page on me called Mudahar. So when you had clicked in, for example, if we can go back to the beginning of this. It's interesting because this kicks right off from the actual video. This is just the videos part of it, if anything. What the fuck? Yeah, around over here where you can see like, no, this is just like the, no, this isn't the homepage. But the homepage would look like this, but it had three options. So one of them was like videos, photos or something. And then they had a whole page called Mudahar. And in the Mudahar page, they had all my information written over there and something about, like, watching me. Now, as far as I know, Mankind's Habit isn't an active website anymore. In fact, uh, I tried going back to it, I think, like, 20 episodes at this point. That would basically make it up to, like, half a fucking year. And I have not encountered an active version of Mankind's Habit, not even, like, a mirror link. So it's kind of weird how I didn't see that site up at all. But it's also interesting how I came across this just video snippet of the work as well. So not really a deep web, well, a deep web video, but it's a very close to home deep web video, obviously. And I just wanted to get the story out of how my information was leaked out over here. And I got a bunch of people asking me if I was safe from this kind of shit. So regardless of interesting, interesting stuff, we'll see how this stuff plays out, actually. Let's go to something else. So here we have a site called conspiracyanalyst.org, all right? So it's got a it's got a it's got a clear web link down over here. And you know, going from a uh, anytime I come across a little hint of a conspiracy, I end up finding a fucking site dedicated to the lust of conspiracies, all right? So over here we got a bunch of things. We've got US news, international news, economic warfare, war and peace, science and technology. What the fuck? Cashless society? Oh man, I've heard a million things about that. Health and wellness, psychological warfare, weather modification, climate change, earth news, space news, <laughs> space news. It's like you're fucking getting alien CNN on here. 9-11 uh, truth, conspiracy theory, global government, and new world order, okay? Anytime a site tells you 9-11 truth, you always got to click on it, but you have to look at it with the ultimate grains of the salt on the earth. Uh, let me open up weather modification because weather modification is fucking weird. Uh, weather modification. NASA satellite imagery reveals shocking proof of climate engineering. Oh, man. All right. Wait, a trouble with geoengineers hacking the planet. All right. Show me the NASA satellite imagery. Okay. Show me how fucking real this is. Uh, apparently they've got this image that's showing us how, uh, how shit's being modified. Uh, all right. It lo looks like fucking chemtrails to be honest, dude, <laughs> whatever the fuck that's called. Some of these look really damn interesting, but they've got weather modification apparently. So, so the government is controlling the weather like this. They're using like microwaves or some shit to like, you know, what was that thing that people kept telling us? Like they had the secret like fields where they just had like what appeared to be solar panels. 
but they were just modifying what it was like what h a a r p or something like that i might be totally wrong it could be something completely like normal or whatever but it was like there was a technology that the united states had where like obama or somebody or any president at the press of a button could use it to like bring natural disasters to other parts of the world which is kind of weird so they got information like this apparently seems like weather modifications now one thing i will say is I'm not a huge person that knows about fucking weather or something like that. Like I'm not a meteorologist or something. I just look at the, I just look at the weather network and say, man, it's going to rain today. Awesome. But over here, uh, it, like this shit looks, I don't know if it looks doctored cause anything could be fucking photoshopped when it comes to a photo, right? If you know, if you, if you got some good Photoshop trick or you can do whatever the fuck you want, but over here, it's like, it seems kind of weird. It's like, it's like they're painting where they're going to have chemtrails on the fucking thing. It almost feels like some of this stuff has been, like, brush-tooled and, like, soft uh, spot healing tools on, like, Photoshop into, like, something like this. So, apparently, this is all over the world. So, if you look through it, it's got, like, Africa's coast. Um, it's got Spain. It's got Australia. It's got uh, Baja, Baja, sorry, not Baja, Baja, California, and even on the Southern Ocean near Antarctica. So, things are getting kind of weird. Hurricane suppression manipulation is one aspect agenda of the climate engineers. 85% of the hurricanes that impact the U.S. originate from Africa. Low pressure systems migrate towards the east off of the Africa's coast. Uh, a great deal of climate engineering intervention takes place in this region. Thus, a number of satellite images shown in the post were captured there. In the attempt to mask the climate intervention activity, the cyclone suppression occurring off the coast of Africa is officially blamed on dust. You can also have dust tornadoes, I remember that. Of course, there is no acknowledgement of the ongoing climate engineering atrocities. All right. So the whole logic is, is like, let's say, I don't know if it's like the Japanese earthquake. Obviously, those are tectonic plates. They're on that, you know, pressure point. It's like Iran, right? Like if an earthquake happens in Iran, it's not like, you know, the government doing conspiracies because Iran is literally on fault line territory. So like they're so prone to that shit. But uh, here the argument is, is like a lot of these disasters like Haiti, for example, which had their, uh, what was it the, was it a tsunami or a hurricane that happened at Haiti? Whatever it was, it was a devastating event, and the idea is that America, using the tools that they had, initially had launched an attack on the individuals, and it created a system where they could they could launch at least at least hurricane at least hurricane manipulation is possible in their eyes, and they've been using that to attack parts of the world, and it makes you wonder if you have such a technology to create hurricanes or manipulate them. Can you not manipulate these hurricanes and events for the better? You know, recently right now there was a tragedy that hit uh, Texas. In fact, Texas, Louisiana, all the, the, the southern part of the U.S., uh, the eastern, southern, southeast part of the U.S. was, like, hit. It was devastated. And the thing is, it's, like, it's, it's one of those devastating events that's going to take, like, years for it to get fucking better. It's, like, what happened in New Orleans or uh, any, any situation like that. It's not, like, a small event. But they've got hurricanes that have devastated the shit out of it. So you think America, at least on home turf, would manipulate the event so th to the point where it wouldn't attack at least its people. But then again, the thing with conspiracy theory sites is they always come up with like the most damning of evidence about it. And they're like, well, the government wouldn't do it because the government's going to make it as, a, as, as, a, as one of those things people focus on while they do some shady shit in the back. And... To an extent, I can almost sit there and because it's late at night, I can sit there and always tell you, you know, maybe that is the case. But it just becomes one of those weird situations where it's like, are we really going to go there? Are we really going to do that in today? Are we really, are we really going to make that the focal point of today's video? You know what I mean? Are we really going to really gonna go that far, right? It's, it's one of those things that you can always just, just sit around and, and talk about for hours on end. So regardless, hurricane manipulation, they have apparently proof of it. I don't know if it's necessarily proof. It's just a bunch of weather patterns that look the same actually taken around the same general area. So a lot of the information seems like it's misconstrued to me or it's like it's not properly placed so that I see what they're trying to show me. But at the same time, maybe I don't see what they're trying to show me because it doesn't really fucking exist. But yeah, that was conspiracy analysis uh, org's idea of climate engineering. I don't want to focus on like 9-11 or shit like that because, motherfucker, we've already seen like everything about 9-11. Dude, at this point, I could write a Bible about 9-11 truths and conspiracies, okay? I could write a, I could write, I could write a whole fucking, uh, I, I could make a, I could make a TV series out of the Illuminati and 9-11. So it's better to not focus on that and focus on something that is a little more tangible, you know what I mean? And yeah, weather conspiracies, we haven't really seen too much of them. You know, we, we've heard about black goo 
And honestly, I believe black goo over the whole weather conspiracy side stuff. But, you know, then again, that's just me. And I'm kind of an asshole when it comes to this. I'm a really skeptical motherfucker. So maybe it's my fault. Maybe maybe it's my problem. Let's go look at something else. All right, so this is uh, Grandma's Garden. I figured uh, we should go from that forum page and look into this website. Now, I believe looking at it, I might have shown this to you all before. Just because, like, this website looks pretty fucking similar. But I guess I'm saying that from the symbol they got over here, a little Unicode. But we're going to open up Index of Symbols and Creatures. We're going to look at what Grandma's Garden is all about. If we go to number one, I think I might be able to... Wait, what is this? Greetings, novice. This shall be your first quest. Pass the entry of Grandma's Garden and find your way out. Refer to the Index of Symbols, Items and Notes, and the Index of Creatures. After leaving, you must both be alive and carrying as many items as possible. Frequently asked stupid questions. What happens if I die? Why is my solution not accepted? What's the meaning of life? Wow, that last question is really that fucked up. But here we got a maze, all right? Uh, apparently they got a bunch of rules like Y1, Omega1, and uh, Unicode something 4, uh, 107, Y6. Uh, pretty standard maze, actually. You can figure this one out easy. But if you go like number three, index of symbols. So start, your entry trip begins here and way out. You can only leave Grandma's Garden here. A one-way path, and death is like the super up arrow. Arrow, uh, Omega's portal, uh, E is creature. Uh, under uh, the question mark underneath is item, and note is uh, is block. Okay, index of item you get fish bowls, paradox, light bowl, crown, cigarette, egg, fire nugget, water nugget, earth nugget, wind nugget, taser key, ladder. So over here you got properties as fragile, true, glowing, priceless, nicotinic, stinky, metallic, stiff. All right. Now if you go to index of notes, these particularly dark passage going to be passed carrying a glowing item. Uh, block two is here lies Elizabeth the incomprehensible. Okay, so it's like a little fucking like maze game you got over here. But they got index creatures. They got like uh, Ichthyocus, Ichthyocus, if a a Vatus, dude. I'm so fucking tired. The bridge troll, the del the delivery boy in trouble, dude. That dude's got swords up the ass, literally. High priestess, and you got the mute boy and the chicken, the emperor, the asshole. All right, the crazy one. Oh, they got dialogue for every encounter. Gigantic naked mole rat, right, as opposed to mole rat that wears a nice tuxedo, I think. But they got multiple characters and shit. I got to really check this video out once I go into it. And they got a little page. But all of it comes down to solving this puzzle. And the puzzle is more like a game. So it's not like, you know, it's not like it's Grandma's Garden. It's, it's actually pretty fucking pretty normal looking. So over here, once you finish this game, you're supposed to get like answers over here. And if you like tick the right way. You should be able to hit OK and figure this one out. What the fuck? Wait, false. All right, some of this stuff. So basically, you have to figure the whole game out, solve all the riddles, and you can exit Grandma's Garden. Now, you probably get something out of this, but it's late at fucking night, and I'm not going to figure it out. So that, over here, if you can look at it, they got all these creatures over here, the encounters, everything going on. Uh, look at that. Cluck, cluck, yikes. Do you have to skuck a care us like that? Maybe you galoot. Say, could we bum a cigarette? Uh, I don't think I should give a little boy a cigarette, though. I mean, <laughs> I could get into trouble for that shit, let me tell you. But apparently, you use these and you figure out exactly which way you're going to go. So I think what we're going to do is, a little late, 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 late night for me, I'm going to leave this one for you, the community, to figure out. And if you guys do figure it out in a consensus, let me know. Uh, just post it in the comment section below. Uh, if you all agree with it, like that comment. And we'll come back to this website next time, and we'll punch in the right code and see just where this leads us to and we can all see what's outside of grandma's garden interesting shit ladies and gentlemen indeed all right ladies and gentlemen that was another episode of dank web browsing interesting week today life uh, immortality uh, virtual at least and a bunch of conspiracy theories and furry porn thanks to nintendo and forum user ladies and gentlemen today has been a weird episode i came home from work i thought maybe today was going to be a little bit more of a relaxing day on the deep web and it was but i think i'm walking away with this video with a mind fuck the video for this week even if we're going to go on it is just related to us entirely and frankly comes a little bit of history about the deep web series and something that happened years ago a year ago plus at this point and uh it's something that i just wanted to bring up because i never really mentioned it before never really responded to anybody about it sometimes people would text me about it and i'd respond to it but nowadays i'm kind of more intrigued about why i found the video about that and what has really happened to Mankind's Habit, the website which had a bunch of interesting stuff on it, you know, as far as videos were considered, and 
I think just just a weird photo. I think of all I can remember, it's like a photo taken of a house from like a long ago. I don't even have the archive, like a master copy of the editing files to look at right now. But let me know what you think about today's Deep Web episode. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. This has been another episode of Dank Web Browsing. This is me, Mudahar, and I am out.